beloved, we are gathered here on this Thursday morning to worship God and to witness the marriage of Noel Phillips and Christy Jones. Let us close our eyes and look up to the Lord as we submit this sacred hour before God. Our Heavenly Father, look mercifully on us who are gathered in your holy presence. Stretch forth your right hand and particularly bless this young couple eagerly waiting for your favor. 
Grant them the assurance that their sins have been forgiven and they are your children. Give them the conviction that you have seen their hearts and approve the desires of their hearts. Renew their spirits, soul and body with your spirit as they are about to enter into this sacred union. Father, as you are about to bless this couple, I pray that you may also bless this congregation and your servant who will represent you in consecrating this sacred union. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Who will give this woman to be married to this man? may be seated. I want to welcome all of you, Noels and Chrissy's parents, families and friends to witness and participate in this wonderful occasion of their holy matrimony. I have known Noel for uh, more than five years, although I have known his father uh, for a much longer period as a great man of God and a good friend. I believe Noel coming to our church in Philadelphia, America, 
Pilgrims Mission International Church was the beginning of a breakthrough in his own life as well as a true blessing to all of us in our church in Philadelphia, especially to, my, uh, to myself and my wife, Lucy. He took part in our discipleship program, graduated from it with honors, and now he is involved in many ministries in our church, especially in music. He is uh, an active part of our worship team, playing violin, which is his favorite instrument. As his pastor and his spiritual father, I have been impressed with his passion for his Lord Jesus Christ and his commitment to his kingdom and to be a true witness for the kingdom of God, his respect and honor for spiritual authority, his love and respect for his parents, and his honesty, humility, and integrity. I have such a respect for this young man. A couple of days ago, I had the privilege of meeting with this beautiful bride, Christy. We met for a premarital counseling session. Normally, it is a six-week, one-hour session. But because of the time constraints, we had to uh, put it together, compress it to uh, three hours, one straight session. And I must say, it went really well. And out of many things in that three-hour session uh, that we accomplished, one most important thing that we accomplished was to identify the most important thing where they are incompatible. Their incompatibility we identified. That was the most important thing that we accomplished. Now, in the world and in the world of marriage counseling, those incompatibilities are the things that fail a marriage, that destroy a marriage. However, when we looked at those incompatibilities in the light of the Word of God, we were able to see, discover the great truth that every one of those incompatibilities are the very foundation of a successful family, a marriage. In Genesis 2, we find that God created Eve to be a helpmate for Adam. In other words, Adam was, when he was created, he was not fully equipped to fulfill the purpose for which he was created. That was intentional. And he needed a helper who would bring in the elements missing in every aspect of his person, physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, and all other aspects, wherever he was missing. And this helpmate would bring in whatever need to fulfill and complete that purpose for which he was created. And at the same time, I must say, he was neither complete. She could not complete her purpose by herself. They needed each other. So their differences were the very design that God has made to make them united, productive, and dependent on each other. In short, if God had made both of you exactly the same, today, at this hour, you will be entering into the most dull, boring, unproductive, and unpleasant married life. So therefore, I would say, you should turn to each other and say, thank God for the differences that he has made. Come on. And I would also, also encourage all the uh, families sitting here, seated here, turn to each other and say, thank God for the differences he has given us. Come on. 
as husband and wife. If you were exactly the same, your life would have been uh, very dull, very boring. And but sometimes when we are not looking in the light of the word of God, we find those differences are the very cause of our problems. And I must say that also, I have a speaker behind me because of that I'm not going to go into the word of God and preach. And besides, our counseling session was good enough. So I want to, although I want to warn you that the marriage that you're about to enter is a very serious commitment. Until this moment, it was a lot of uh, uh, laughing, a uh, lot of excitement, and all that good stuff. Marriage is a good stuff. But at the same time, there is a new, is a shift in your relationship. From casual to a serious relationship. From non-committed to a committed relationship. Or in other words, I would say, you are about to enter into a highway that has only one way. And there is no exit. And there is no U-turn. Once you enter this highway, it is a one way all the way to the end of your journey. So if you're not committed and prepared, I would encourage you not to enter. There are many couples who have entered this one way and struggling throughout their journey. But knowing you and after the counseling session, I have full confidence that you cannot wait to enter on this highway. I have heard a story, uh, a, a, an incident, um, that there was a, a wonderful couple, uh, young man and young woman, they loved so much, they loved each other. They would do anything for each other. They were excited to see each other. And they got married. And while they were uh, dating or courting, at that time, the other people were so jealous of them. They got married. And then they went on to their honeymoon. And after the honeymoon, uh, they both came back to his house. And her mother loved her so much, and so mother ca couldn't wait to hear the report of their, uh, their marriage and the honeymoon especially. So the mother called her uh, the, the day after they came home. And mother called her and asked her, daughter, how was your uh, honeymoon? How was it? Uh, the daughter said, I couldn't wait to call you. I'm glad that you called me. Come on, come home and get me. I cannot wait. Stay with this man another day. He is terrible. I cannot stand another day with him. So the mother said, what happened? He was such a wonderful, nice man. And I cannot believe that he could be that bad. And she said, yeah, he was good. Even through the honeymoon, he was very good. And when we came home, he started to say some terrible four-letter words. The mother said, what are those four-letter words that he is calling you? I need to hear that. He said, no, ma'am. He is not calling me those four-letter words. He is saying these four-letter words, such as dust, clean, wash, cook, <laughs> iron. These type of four, the harsh words. I never heard you saying these words to me at home. And that breaks my heart. And that is the only problem in this new shift into the new relationship. It is a different level. It's a different commitment. Anything that takes to make each other happy and make your life together work, that you should be willing to do it. And normally there is a, the, uh, the marriage counselors in the world will advise the uh, couple who enter into marriage, they will say it is a 50-50 responsibility. You have to go 50%, you have to do 50%. But as a Christian counselor and a pastor, I would tell you, it is not a 50-50. It is a 100%, 100% relationship. Whether one fails or not, the other goes all the way to the 100%. And that is, in other words, it is called unconditional love. It is your love toward her is not dependent on contingent on the love from her. And your love toward Noel is not dependent on his love either. 
again since we have a speaker i am going to uh, stop my introduction and once again i welcome all of you to this beautiful uh, moment i am going to ask prishkila thomas to come and read first corinthians chapter 13 reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 1 Corinthians chapter 13 Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains but have not love I am nothing And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does envy. <coughs> love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, What shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation by knowledge by prophesying or by teaching bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails but whether there are prophecies they will fail whether there are tongues they will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away for we know in part and we prophesy in part But when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face. Now I know in part but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three but the greatest of these is love
Greetings to you all in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I deem it as a great privilege to have been asked to stand before you with the word of God. And I really thank uh, Reverend Epi Phillips and his family, Noel and First Secrecy's family, for allowing me to uh, bring God's word today, this morning. I and Philip Chen have been friends for several years. We worked together, we ministered together. Still we associate together. I know Noel and Neil from a very young age, not my young age, their young age. And uh, Noel grew up in a Christian minister's family and has been disciplined in that way. And I know that Christy also has strong commitment as a believer, and I thank for both families. So for uh, today's medit a brief meditation, I would like to read from Luke chapter 3, verses beginning from 4 to 6. Luke chapter 3, verses beginning from 4 to 6. As it is written in the book of or the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Let us pause for a moment to pray. Father God, we commit ourselves into your care this morning. Thank you for the wonderful time we are enjoying in your presence. As we attend this wedding ceremony, we know that you are the chief celebrant. And we would like to listen to you, to your voice, to your voice through your spirit and from your word. Speak to us this morning. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, as I begin this short message, I'm reminded of a story. One day, a traveler was traveling through a jungle, and suddenly something caught his attention. And a mouse was jumping up and down. Mouse. Then he stopped, and he asked the mouse, what is the reason you are so excited? Why you are standing up and down and dancing and, you know, uh, making all this merry? And the mouse said, my brother is getting married tomorrow. That's why I'm so excited. <laughs> then he said, where is your brother? Let me see him. So he just pointed and said, look there. My brother is standing there. So he was looking through the canopy and found a lion standing there instead of a mouse. He said, mouse, how come, you, how come your brother is a lion and you're a mouse? And he said, you know, even I was like him before I got married. <laughs> Some of you will get it on the way, okay. <laughs> so, Noel, I got good news for you. You're going to be thinner. <laughs> and Christy, I got good news for you too. You're going to tame a lion into a mouse. Jokes apart, marriage involves a lot of change, which we qualitatively call it transformation. It invites us to change. So this morning, <coughs> the passage which I read maybe will sound a little strange to you, but it talks about John the Baptist, which whom Jesus said he is the greatest of all born out of woman. And John the Baptist had a very distinctive ministry, the ministry of preparing the way. So I just wanted to take one single theme, to just extract one theme out of that, and to relate to today's context that marriage, in a sense, is a ministry of preparing the way. From today onwards, you are stepping into a new zone of ministry, a new zone of Christian witnessing, that you are into preparing the way. Actually, the passage which I read comes from Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 3. 
So it is uh, clearly cited.